Uh, welcome to the next in the Trading Spotlight uh, webinar series for uh, Admirals. Great to have you all here with us today for this interesting subject on attacking currency trends. So uh, my name's uh, Paul. I'm going to be a guide here for the uh, session for about the next 40 minutes or so. Uh, if you've joined us here live today, great to have you here. And if you've got questions or comments, put them in the uh, chat box. If you're watching this later on the Admirals YouTube channel, then uh, once again, uh, thanks for joining us. I hope you uh, enjoy it. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our uh, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and also, if you've got any you know, comments or thoughts, questions, please feel free to put them in. Uh, what you'll also find at the end of this session, uh, the people joining us here today for the uh, live session, you'll be sent uh, just a, a quick feedback form there afterwards. And we'd really appreciate it. If you just take a few moments to, to fill that in. That you know, helps us, gives us an idea that we're delivering the right content for yourself. And if you've got ideas or thoughts, uh, about topics you would like to see us cover in the future for you, then please, we, you know, we'd love to hear that. We always appreciate uh, any particular uh, feedback that you may have. So uh, without further ado, let me bring up the slides and let's get on to talking about uh, attacking currency trends. So just, uh, just bear with us a, uh, a moment there, ladies and gentlemen. Excellent. I hope you can, uh, as I said, hope you can hear me, hope you can see me, and I uh, hope you can uh, uh, see the, the slides. And uh, great to see everybody here saying uh, hello, hello, uh, Janos, hello, Mladen, Philips, Andreas, uh, Yevbaran. Okay. Uh, so and, uh, we've got a, 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 you know, a mixed audience this evening. You know, uh, what we always appreciate is that uh, here at Admirals, that, you know, in terms of our audience, you know, we have complete beginners to, to people who've been trading for a long time. You're all welcome. There'll all be something for you to, to take away. We also recognize that we have a you know, truly global audience. So wherever you're joining us from in the world, you know, you are very welcome. We hope you're, uh, you're safe and well during this rather uh, volatile 2022 that we find ourselves uh, in. But uh, with that in mind, let's chat about attacking currency trends. So as the name implies, we're going to talk about uh, uh, FX markets, currency markets, and we're going to talk about what we can do to sort of effectively, uh, let's say, milk the most out of a, uh, a good FX trend. Uh, as always, it helps me, you know, it'd be great to hear, you know, for those of you here today joining us, you know, what is your own experience you know, do you have experience of trading uh, trends? Do you have experience of trading trends within FX markets? Are there ways and means that you uh, try to sort of, you know, uh, push a good position? If you've got any comments or thoughts or feedback, we'd love to hear it there. You can put that in the uh, chat box. You know, it, uh, as I say, always say, it's, uh, you know, there's no, uh, there's never any judgment from us here. You know, you might have had a good experience, you might have had a challenging experience. You might have actually no experience, which is why you're here. That's what these sessions are for, to help educate you and provide you with useful insight that you can use in your uh, own trading. But as I said, all uh, thoughts and comments are uh, particularly welcome. Uh, hello to you, Remus, Remo, as well. So uh, as I said, we've got a real global audience with us today, and that's, uh, that's fabulous to, to, to see that, and you're all very, very welcome. So uh, remember, here we are at Admirals, a Forex and CFD broker with global presence and local support, uh, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the uh, most popular uh, trading products and allowing you the opportunity to engage with markets using both the MT4 and MT5 platform. If you have any more questions about Admirals, please get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to help guide you. Also, you know, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, Whilst we do these uh, wonderful live sessions, what you'll find is that all of the content that we create from myself uh, and also my uh, colleagues, Marcus and Jens, you'll find that that goes on to the uh, Admirals YouTube channel. You can find it there at Admirals Global. I would suggest that you uh, basically find it out there, subscribe to it so that you're kept abreast of uh, all the content that the Admirals team are creating for you. So what's on our agenda today, ladies and gentlemen? Well, not unsurprisingly, we'll talk a little bit about how to identify a good currency trend. That always helps us a good deal. Uh, and, you know, what I'm going to talk about is really about how to get aboard a good trend, okay? How to, to, to get on it and how to attack them for increased performance, right? And they all feed in together. They all uh, sort of, you know, help each other in terms of, you know, you know, you need to have a good currency trend. You need to know how to get aboard it. And you need to know how to attack it in order to give yourself the, uh, the best chance possible as a, uh, as a trader. And we will talk about that as we uh, go through our session. 
So for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's Paul. Uh, you know, I've been around the block for a while. OK, I've traded for a good while, traded for hedge funds, traded for high net worth clients. Uh, primarily, my own trading tends to be FX indices and quantities. That's sort of my particular focus. Uh, and I tend to be a trend trader for longer term trading and a, a reversal trader for shorter term intraday trading. So here we go, uh, attacking currency trends. Uh, as the slide says, we often see that many new traders are looking for complicated trading tactics when they're beginning their trading journeys. And in reality, it's actually very often that the simpler methods, the simpler setups, is that help them as they learn to trade at the beginning of their uh, careers. Uh, trend trading is a simple way to engage with markets that are in flow and moving consistently which doesn't unfortunately happen as often as we would like. As I generally say, you know, markets only really trend well for about 20 to 30% of the time. So when they are trending, when they're in flow, when they're moving consistency, uh, consistently, well, then it is in our benefit to basically make the most of that. And so in this session, we'll look at how to attack currency trends for the best way to achieve trading success. So, you know, as I said there, you know, markets don't trend as often as we would like. All right. A lot of the time they are spent, OK, in different environments, which we're about to take a, a quick uh, reminder of. But what it is, is that once we identify when we in, are in a good trend, we want to find ways, OK, just a simple way that actually we can continue to uh, sort of attack that trend. That's what we're particularly looking for, right? That's um, that's what will actually help us. And we will we will talk about the details of that in a few slides, uh, in a few slides time. But as I said, it's uh, it's great to have you all here. If you know if there's if you've got your own particular uh, comments or thoughts or own particular experiences in sort of trying to trade FX trends or attacking those FX trends, you know, please by all means feel free to uh, pop those uh, comments and thoughts in the uh, in the chat box. They're always they're always welcome. As I said, you know, there is uh, there's no judgment for me. I always have you know the greatest uh, respect. Okay, for other traders who are you know basically engaging in financial markets, right? So uh, you know, there's never any judgment for me. We all, even myself, all right, we are all still learning on our own trading journey, all right, and we're just all at different different parts of that particular pathway. So um, if many people sort of come and talk to me and say, Paul, you know, if only I knew how you traded FX markets, then I would be successful. Uh, I, I wish it was as simple as that, ladies and gentlemen. But, you know, uh, I, I share here exactly my overall picture on how I trade FX, namely that I have a simple strategy, right? And that simple strategy really in FX markets is that I'm looking to buy strength and sell weakness. And, you know, once I've identified where the strength and where the weakness is within FX markets, then I'm just looking for, you know, simple tactics, preferably for me, ideally on a pullback with using a bit of price action for an entry. That's it. OK, nice and simple. And it should be simple. You know, lots of people sort of overcomplicate their trading. You know, they think they have to have all manner of indicators on the charts. They think they have to have all manner of uh, uh, sort of, you know, economic and fundamental indicators that they can utilize to, to build their picture. But actually what tends to happen, I find, for traders, especially new traders, is that they overcomplicate it. Uh, and then they just invariably go into a period of analysis by paralysis. Your strategy really, really should be almost like a simple, you know, kind of, one or two sentences, all right? And for me, it is, you know, within FX markets, I'm looking to buy strength and sell weakness using a price action for an entry on a pullback. There you go, all right? I've just shared, all right, my overall, you know, uh, over how I overall engage with FX markets. And a lot of people would be very disappointed with that because, you know, they think it needs to be more intricate and needs more detail, okay? Well, of course, of course there is. But generally, you know, you are able to operate in markets much easier when you have emboldened, you have basically embedded, you have embraced a very, very simple way of operating. Men in particular, you know, and I have been as guilty of this as, as anybody is that, you know, very often men will overcomplicate things. We think, oh, it can't be that simple. We need to add more, we need to add more and more layers of complexity. And actually, uh, you don't. All right. I'm a great believer in trading that less is more. You want to keep it as, as simple, okay, as simple as a uh, and as clear as you possibly uh, as you possibly can. So, as I said, that is the kind of the, my big picture on how I look to trade FX. And 
what I'm going to talk about really today is it's actually today is probably the tactic, right? Okay, the strategy about how I get to there, that's you know, that's that's you know, that's my approach work. But the tactics, you know, that's what we're going to focus on today because that's actually really what you want to be interested in in terms of looking at how to an attack a, a currency trend. So you know, as I said, I appreciate that, you know, we have people from all, uh, you know, all the uh, kind of all across the globe and also from, you know, the complete spectrum of the sort of trading experience from complete beginners to, you know, very experienced traders. Now, what I always suggest is to new traders is the quite simple, keep it very simple. OK, and if you can just even try and understand these kind of, let's say, these sort of five phases of the market, that is a good starting place. All right. That's a good starting place for new traders. Part one of those phases of the markets is, as you can quite clearly see there on the chart in front of me, let me just move this little video slot up, is that, you know, your simple first three simple phases are you're in a downtrend, market could be sideways, or market is in an uptrend. You hear me say this week after week after week, namely that don't force a trend. A good trend should leap off the chart at you. Don't force it. If you find yourself having to turn your screen to the side, squinting, closing your eyes, doing all sorts of, you know, uh, uh, um, kind of uh, wild gyrations in order to try and convince yourself that that's possibly a trend, I, I can give you a bit of simple advice. It probably isn't. Good trends leap off the chart at you, right? And, and I will admit, the more you practice your analysis, the more you work at it, the easier it is to spot them. But that's like any that's like any endeavor in life, OK? The more you practice at it, the better you'll become. There's nothing really, nothing really revolutionary there. But as I said a little bit earlier, really, markets only sort of tend to trend for about 20 to 30 percent of the time. A lot of the time they are in a sideways or they're in the other final two, namely that they are in transition. They are in transition on the left from a downtrend to an uptrend or they're in a transition from an uptrend to a downtrend. Now, what I can say from my own experience is that, you know, what we always like to see is we like to see those transitions to be quite orderly, quite clean on the chart, quite easy to identify. But if you trade long enough, you'll know that, you know, what you want from the market, what you actually get can very often be two very different things. What it is is about understanding and recognizing that, you know, the market is going through a transition. How it goes through and how long that takes, well, you know, it takes as long as it takes, all right? It takes as long as it takes. And for a new trader, if you're looking at that, you know, transition and you're not really sure, you're not really understanding, well, the best guidance I can give you is to just is to just sit on your hands. All right. Stay, stay on the sidelines until the market plays its hand, until the market lets you know that, bosh, this is what we're doing. It's not going sideways. It's actually transitioning from a downtrend into an uptrend or transitioning from an uptrend into a downtrend. So those are those kind of five phases of the markets, you know, and as I said, for beginners, if you're able to even just identify those five phases, that's a starting point. All right. That's a starting, you know, your starting block from which you can actually sort of, you know, um, uh, you can basically deploy your trading tactics based upon what particular phase the market's in. Ideally, preferably, certainly for the uh, for the purposes of this session today, you know, when we're seeing, you know, market in the phases of a really very clear uptrend or a very clear downtrend, you know, well, invariably, that's what we're particularly looking for. But equally, equally, you know, as you grow in experience, you might be able to recognize when a market is transitioning from a downtrend to an uptrend, or transitioning from an uptrend to a downtrend. And then, you know, there are also ways and means that you might be able to identify when a market breaks out of a sideways range of consolidation because it's actually starting to move into a, uh, into a new trend. And that's what we're, you know, interested in. So, you know, you've heard me talk about it many times over the, uh, the, you know, the time we've been doing these trading spotlight webinar series is that, you know, there are thousands of trading and investing methods, thousands, you, you know, you can go onto, you can go onto the internet and stuff and search for them and you'll, you'll know yourself, there's thousands of them, right? Thousands of them, some, from some free to some very expensive, okay, and you know, everything to cut your cloth accordingly. But I generally sort of say to, to new traders, as a general rule, most, you know, most kind of trading and investing methods, they boil down to one of two styles, really, for the most part. You're going to trade a break of a line of support resistance, or you're going to be trading a bounce off a line of support or resistance. As simple as that. You know, you, you know, there might be elements to it, okay? There might be elements to it, there might be, you know, indicators involved, there might be, you know, three or four elements, you know, coming together. But really, when you boil it down, 
that's what the majority, not all, but the majority of trading investor methods are. You're trading a break of a line of support resistance or a bounce off a line of support resistance. And it's a kind of, a, you know, as soon as you can sort of recognize that and understand it and accept it, well, then suddenly it becomes easier for you to, to be a trader because you, you know what you're looking for. You're trying to be better at understanding what is the market doing in that moment. Now, they both have their pros and cons, whether you are prefer to be trader a breakout or whether you to trade you know, a bounce off or, you know, a particular, a, a, you know, a kind of a, a pullback. You know, that they both have their pros and cons. You will have heard me say it many times. There is, you know, there is no perfection in trading. Okay? There is there is nothing that gives you, you know, 100% success every time. Right? There is just nothing at all like that. And if someone tries to tell you there is, they're, they're talking nonsense, ladies and gentlemen. There is no perfection. It is about working out what works for you, right? What is the easiest plan for you to consistently execute trade after trade after trade for a sample of 20, 50, 100, 200 trades? So now today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to just focus on a very simple pullback setup, which will help us attack currency trends. That's what we're particularly looking for. Just a very, very simple, very simple setup. Because as I said uh, right at the start, sometimes people overcomplicate these things. And actually, a very simple mechanical setup can actually help you do really, really well. So... Let's put it in a bit of a frame or a bit of context. You know, the uh, the uh, multi-billionaire, uh, you know, currency trader, George Soros came out with a quote that it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, but how much you win when you're right and how little you lose when you're wrong. Now, you know, whatever you think of Mr. Soros, OK, you know, you, you, you're welcome to your own particular opinions on him as an individual. But to be fair, as a trader, uh, that quote is absolutely spot on. All right. Doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, but how much you win when you're right. And how little you lose when you're wrong. Now, when it comes to you know how little you lose when you're wrong, you know we've done lots and lots of videos which you'll find in the YouTube channel uh, about you know managing risk and and you know we'll have heard those of you who've joined me plenty of times. Well, you've heard me you know banging on literally about how you know you're managing risk is your first and number one priority. But on the flip side, it is about you know how much do you win when you are right, uh, and that that is a, that is an interesting subject which is what we're going to you know focus on today. And as it says there, you know, it's a great quote. I said, no, it's an easy quote to sort of, you know, to regurgitate. But what does it actually mean to us as traders? How do you actually do that? How do you actually, you know, turn that quote into something that is workable that you can utilize in your trading from tomorrow? Well, let's uh, let's take a look. So, firstly, all right, when you know, and, uh, and you know, whilst we are talking primarily about mostly attacking currency trends, uh, you know. The, this concept, okay, these ideas, you know, they are in many ways time frame and instrument agnostic. And, and what you should firstly be doing is always looking for an asymmetric reward to risk ratio in our trades, ideally a minimum of two times, you know, two times reward for, you know, whatever risk you're taking, you know, and, you know, ideally more, all right. What you actually often find is that many new traders are doing the exact opposite, okay, you know, they're, they're you know, they're uh, risking, you know, let's say they're risking 200 euros to make 100 euros rather than the other way around, you know, risking 100 euros to generate 200 euros possible uh, in return. That's what an asymmetric reward to risk ratio is about. It's about putting that reward in your uh, favor. And that helps us put expectancy in our favor. OK, and that's a bit of a, uh, it's probably, you know, a little bit more of a, a complex idea about understanding whether you have positive or negative expectancy within your uh, trading. You know, but if you are effectively, if you have, uh, you know, a good asymmetric reward to risk ratio, well, then you're starting to, to sort of, you know, put every put all the uh, kind of equations to come in your particular uh, in your particular favor. So, uh, you know, as it says there, uh, you know, having asymmetric reward to risk basically will help you. All right. That will help you. But the major leap comes from when we turn our trades into positions. All right. The major leap, OK, in terms of generating equity curve comes from when you add to your uh, initial trades and build a position. Now, uh, uh, as I said, we're going to be talk talking mostly about attacking currency trends, but that works across all time frames and uh, all instruments. But we're just going to be focusing on predominantly on our currency trends here. And, you know, and it is the major leap comes from when we add to our uh, positions. Uh, you know, and one of the reasons there, you know, we might be saying, well, what is that particular picture there? You know, well, that is a uh, that's actually a cleaning product called Brasso, uh, which I actually have a can of it on my uh, on my trading desk uh, because uh, sometimes, you know, it's uh, it's there to remind me that 
you know, uh, sometimes even a trader for uh, as experienced as me that, you know, I sometimes need to, uh, you know, get out the brass and uh, polish up my uh, big brass, <clears throat> whatever you'd like to call them, because it's time for me, it's time for me to basically put the trade on and attack currency trends. OK, not always, not always easy, but it is the best way to effectively make a leap in terms of building our uh, trading account. So, as you know, as it says there. For most people, talking about adding to the trades and building a position is easy. It's easy to do. But how can we actually do it? How can we actually achieve that in a very simple, easy, clear way? Uh, and that's where we're going to use an old uh, trading mentor called uh, Joe Ross, who you may or may not have heard of. So um, in many ways, Joe Ross was kind of the equivalent of uh, Warren Buffett, traded for like over 50 years, very well regarded American gentleman. Uh, and he, you know, he developed lots of very simple tools for using markets. Uh, one of which I use is, is what's called the, the Ross hook. Uh, and this is a very simple mechanical way for you to be able to sort of, you know, attack currency trends. And that's, you know, that's what we're going to have a little bit of a, uh, have a little bit of a look at uh, now. So what is a Ross hook? Now, I appreciate, you know, many people will never have heard it. They may will never have heard of Joe Ross, won't have heard of Ross Hook. But, you know, it's uh, it's quite simple. And I'm, I'm going to talk through it now here. I'm going to talk about the setup and talk about how we utilize it in our uh, trading to attack currency trends. Let's bring up the old uh, drawing tool here. Oh, gosh. Um, so a Ross Hook. A first definition. A Ross Hook occurs. When the number two point of a one, two, three formation is violated, uh, and then, and this is the important thing, prices fail to continue in the direction they were moving as a result of the violation. And the other part is every instance of subsequent failures of price to move in the direction of the original point two also creates a Ross hook. What does that mean? Um, this is a, a version of what I would call a one, two, three. Okay, to, you might actually look at it as a double top. We did a uh, we did a video on that. Uh, I think it's a week or two ago. You'll find that in the Admiral's YouTube channel. So be sure to, to tap in. So in a one, two, three pattern or a double top, you have you know, point two, which is here. All right, just uh, excuse my drawing. As I always say, I'm a better trader than I'm an artist. But what we have here is you know a Ross hook occurs when the number two point, okay, which was here, is violated. All right. That's when we start to look at it. And here you go. And when prices fail to continue in the direction. So this particular candle here is the candle that effectively breaks the point two of this one, two, three formation, this double top, you know, or double bottom. And, you know, and it breaks down, it's a big, you can see it's a big red candle. And there's a bit of wicks to both sides. But what happens is, invariably, is the next candle, okay? The next candle fails to continue in the direction they were moving. So what we actually were looking for, really, for this candle here, this green candle here, we'd actually prefer to be keeping keeping making new lows. And that's what we're actually looking for, you know, to make it new lows. And when it doesn't, that, okay, that becomes a Ross hook. Let's just clear these off again. That becomes one version of a Ross hook there. Because actually, we've broken the point two, but actually you can see the price, the price has actually sort of pulled back, hasn't it? Prices actually pull back to the point two. That in itself might be a, a trading setup that uh, you might want to take a look into there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, but that's it, right? Prices fail to continue the direction that they were moving as a result of a violation. That, okay, that forms what we can know as, as a Ross hook, all right? That's what we know as a Ross hook. And I'm going to explain a couple more and few, give you a few more examples just to, to try and help you, all right? Because, uh, it, it, you know, you might be difficult to understand at first, but what will happen is, you know, once it clicks, you'll be able to see them everywhere, okay? And that can be, that can be enormously helpful. So that is one definition of a Ross hook. Another definition of a Ross hook is a Ross hook occurs when prices fail to continue in the direction they were moving following a breakout from any type of console, consolidation sideways market. Every instance of subsequent failures of prices to move in the direction of the original breakout of the consolidation also creates a Ross hook. So, you know, what we have here is, you know, here's a, here's a piece where, you know, this was, the chart was going sideways, okay? Price was just basically bouncing around sideways. And here we see it breaks out. It breaks out here, you know, pushes, makes a new high. The next candle pushes on, right? Makes a kind of a new high. The weekly candle after pushes up, 
makes a new high, all right? However, remember here, there is a, yes, it's a bullish candle, but look, the higher that candle is lower than the candle before, all right? Look at that, a right rustle of the curves and price fails to continue in the direction they were moving following a breakout from any type of consolidation. This then here, that then becomes the Ross hook, all right? That then becomes the Ross hook. So, you know, it's, you know, when there's a breakout, okay, you're looking for, you know, you're looking for each candle to, to, to push further in the direction of the new. And the moment it doesn't, the, the first candle that fails to, that is creating the Ross hook, all right? So that's it, it's quite simple, quite, quite simple, and quite mechanical as, as we will look at uh, here in a moment. So, as it says there, the Ross hook works equally well in all markets and in all time frames. The reason it does work is that it reveals a universal truth. And that universal truth is that periodically, there are always some traders taking profits. There is always some traders. You don't know what timelines or targets or objectives every other trader has when you're, you know, when you're engaged in a particular trade. Some traders might be in there for a minute. Some traders might be in there for a month. You don't know at all. But periodically, there were always going to be some traders somewhere taking profits. And what is very useful, I feel, especially for new traders, is that when you trade the Ross hook, you don't need any other indicators. You don't need mathematical formulas or complications of any kind, because the Ross hook stands on the fact that it exists and it directly reflects what the market is doing. Right. Can an indicator do that? No, not a chance. There is nothing to interpret with the Ross hook. And I think this is actually quite almost you know it's almost it's almost too simple all right for many people i remember what i said earlier people like to overcomplicate things there's nothing to interpret with the ross hook all right it's either there or it isn't it is either there or it isn't you know let's get the old drawing tool up again all right you know price here consolidation it breaks out it pushes down pushes down oops, here just there we go sorry my uh, mouse is having a little uh, uh, a little I decided to go on a Friday afternoon strike. Um, and here, sorry, we break out, we make a new low. We break out, we make a new low. This candle is the first one to fail to continue, right? To fail to continue in that downtrend. This then becomes the Ross hook. And actually what we see is, you know, when it breaks that level, what happens is we push down, we push down, and then this candle here fails, to, fails, right, to continue. And this is a Ross hook. And now suddenly we have two Ross hooks there. And they simply exist. There is no uh, ambiguity. And I think that is very, very useful for traders. No ambiguity. It is either there or it's not. And if it's there, we'll learn out what to do with it. So what it does is it says that it provides a simple mechanical signal for when to add to our positions, because and this is what we look at doing. Once we've taken our initial trade, when that initial trade might be for all sorts of reasons, maybe it's a double top, maybe it's a double bottom, maybe it's a, a candlestick trigger, maybe it's a bounce off a moving average. Once you're in that trade, you build a position by adding a trade every time a Ross hook is formed. You enter either, you enter either on the break of the Ross hook or you enter on the break of the high or low of the candle. What does that actually mean? Well, in this particular case here, this particular example here, once it's here and it's, you know, it's printed that Ross hook, what we can do is we can just basically, if we just want to, when price trades beneath that level of the Ross hook again, this is when we're trading. This is when we're actually adding to our trade. Alternatively, alternatively, when we have this Ross hook here and price pulls back, well, then what we look to do is to trail an entry stop. And what happens is, as soon as the momentum, as soon as that downward momentum re-emerges, that is actually where we're getting in. So a little bit more risk, but the opportunity to generate better reward. That is all, you know, we always have to understand where we sit on the spectrum. But it is, you know, once you've taken your initial trade, you just, every time you see a Ross hook, you add to it. And that's the way we, that's the way you look to work, okay? You enter on either the break of the Ross hook level itself, or you end on the break of the high of the low of the candle as it uh, as it is pulled back. You know that will depend an awful lot on your particular attitude to risk. Um, so you know here's a couple of examples here. This is one from a while back. Uh, there's a lot of a uh, lot on Kiwi dollar. Okay, um, so this is a Kiwi dollar here. Um, the Kiwi dollar was in a particular environment for me, a proprietary environment of what they call a, a, 
a stand on sell. So I'm already looking to be a seller on the Kiwi against the dollar. Remember what I said earlier, you know, I particularly like to look to, to trade, you know, buy strength and sell weakness at this particular time. US dollar is very strong. Uh, Kiwi dollar is very weak. So I already have my strategy in place of how I want to operate. Uh, you know, and, and actually what happens is, you know, as, after the price is pulled back, it creates this really uh, nice uh, pin bar, which is a key reversal candle on the weekly chart. Uh, and as you can see, you know, the initial trade just basically was running down to here. This was my uh, target here around about uh, uh, 65.50. OK, that was uh, that was the longer term target on the weekly chart because basically we had dollar strength, Kiwi dollar weakness. So that's all nice. OK, that's nice. You know, nice trade on and all that. But what we have and what we had the opportunity to do was, you know, if you go down to the daily chart every time, OK, every time the daily chart printed a Ross hook. Well, that provided an opportunity to add to your initial trade, to build a position. And this is what we're talking about in terms of attacking currency trends. Namely that what we're saying is, remember, markets are only in, you know, a trend for 20 to 30 percent of the time. A lot of the time they're not. So when they are in a very good, clear trend that is, you know, is, is has, a, you know, is moving consistently. Well, we want to take the opportunity to act, attack that trend as much as we possibly can. And the kind of interesting thing, uh, the interesting thing for this was that actually, the, you know, the first one or two actually failed. The first they actually failed. OK, so, uh, you know, normally people show uh, all of the, uh, the the easy trades that win, but actually this failed. And that can happen because there can be, as you go down a time frame, there can be additional volatility include. But what actually happens is, you know, we see is that basically price pulls back. OK, and I I personally prefer to trade the, the break of the uh, the, the candle once the momentum comes in rather than the overall Ross hook. But, you know, what we actually saw was the, okay, you can see for yourself, you know, opportunities to basically to add to this trade, right? To add to that trade every time, every time there was a, a pullback, every time it formed a Ross hook, there was an opportunity to add to that trade. And as I said, this is about, you know, uh, attacking currency trends. This is about using the Ross hook every time it works for you just to basically attack that, all right? To, you know, attack the trend to build a position, to go from one initial trade to building a position. And I know that can be actually quite challenging for traders because once they've got their one trade on, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're, they can be worried, they can be nervous, they can be sat on the edge of their seat. And this is where, as I said, this is where sometimes you need to, uh, uh, you know, pull out the brasso, all right, and uh, polish up your, uh, your uh, um, yes, <clears throat> your big brass so-and-sos, so, because you actually, you need to put the trade on right you're a trader it's your job to put the trade up that's that's actually what that's what your job is and you know and if it meets the uh, ross hook setup well then your job is to put the trade on right that's it okay you know you don't really know you know you don't really know the outcome of the trade all right you know the market anything can happen in the market it's your just job to follow your uh, follow your particular trading uh, um, uh, plan so um, here's an example from this is silver, okay. Um, but what we saw is, you know, it's a big picture, okay. And, uh, you know, I talk about how I like trading on weekly charts. And um, this was actually probably you can see this is a very big descending triangle on the uh, weekly chart. Uh, and actually, what had happened is price had uh, pulled back here. Price had pulled back to the 50 period moving average, uh, and then it printed uh, a big bearish engulfing candle. It was a pin bar. It was a key reversal. That was, you know, the opportunity, right? You know, getting short. This, you know, getting short on a pullback. That's the initial trade. Okay, it should have been the initial, uh, the initial trade. Uh, and then actually, what happened was, you know, um, because actually I missed the initial trade. All right, I missed the initial, trade, and I'm not still entirely sure how that happened, but I actually I did miss the beautiful early setup. But what I was able to do was, uh, you know, then move to the four hour chart here and then build a position using the kind of Ross hook add-ons, all right? Namely, every time it pulled back, okay, you would add, pulls back, you add, pulls back, you add, okay? All of the way down there, right? Because, you know, once I said, once you're into a, yeah, it's into a strong trend, you want to basically be able to sort of just, you know, take the trade and add it. That is, that is the way you attack a trend, okay? That is the way you actually look to, to, to generate and build, um, generate and build your equity curve. It's not always easy. Sometimes it's, it's challenging. But what you will learn, okay, as you go through, is that sometimes you know it's the uh, it's the you know it's the hard trade is the is the good trade. 
Uh, and here's an example from a couple of weeks ago. All right, this uh, is the uh, um, this is the Kiwi dollar against Canadian dollar on the weekly chart. You can probably see that it, you know it's been effectively in a uh, in a downtrend for about the last 15, 18 months. All right, it was just you know making making lower lows, lower highs, uh, and price you know it, it put in a very nice run there at the start of the year. Then it rallied back up, uh, and what we saw here was you know the initial trade setup was. We had firstly, we had a, a three bar re reversal there off the 50 period moving average, uh, which was also, you know, a nice uh, pin bar. OK, it's also a bounce off the 50. Uh, what we also then happened is it became a, a sort of what a, a kind of a double top setup, one, two, three setup for myself. Remember what we said earlier on? OK, one, two, three. OK, once price violates point two, well, then, you know, the trade is on. OK, and then, you know, so the initial trade was already very clear, right? The initial trade was already very clear in that. Also, in terms of my strategy, you know, what we had was uh, invariably coming to February, March was uh, Kiwi dollar was enormously, uh, enormously weak. Canadian dollar was enormously strong. So remember what I'm saying? I'm always looking for ways to buy strength and sell weakness. That's, you know, that's the name of the game for me. And once I identify, you know, the strategy, it's the tactics that I'm using to, to basically to build a um, to build a position. And so, you know, if we went down to the, uh, the daily chart, what you'll see here is that the kind of that uh, the weekly price action there, you know, was actually just you know looking as a you know you might say that's a bit of a kind of a descending wedge, kind of a straight level there. But once we started to break it, and we certainly broke it with real strength there, okay, with a real kind of engulfing what I know is a domino candle, breaking the levels of support, okay, really just demonstrating that price is now beneath the moving averages. We're getting ready to sort of you know start a downtrend because Kiwi dollar is weakening, Canadian dollar is strengthening. Uh, and then every time, okay, you pull back. That was a, you know, there was a Ross hook there. There was a Ross hook there. Okay, there was a Ross hook there. There was a Ross hook there. There was a Ross hook there. Okay, there was a Ross hook there. But actually, it, uh, it, you know, it failed. All right. So you had basically five add-ons there. All right, four wins and one loss. And that was just from building a position. All right. So you had the initial trade, and then, as I said, the Ross hook used to be able to sort of build a position. As I said, that is the way to do it. And you know, I'm just showing you examples on the you know, the weekly and the daily charts in terms of how to do it on the uh, FX pairs. But you know, in terms of Ross hooks, all right, you will see them across all time frames and all instruments. They are they are out there, right? They are out there to work with. Okay, out there to 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 be utilized. And as I said with a little bit of practice. Okay, a little bit of practice. You know, you'll actually start to see them very quickly and very easily. And they're uh, they, uh, you know, as I said, it's a very simple, very mechanical, very unambiguous. A Ross hook is either there or it isn't. There's there's no need for any real sort of interpretation. It is either there or it's not. And I think for most traders, having that kind of mechanical setup actually is what they need at the start of their uh, their trading career. Yeah, and I had another real uh, recent example on the Kiwi dollar against the US uh, dollar here. Uh, once again, you can see that you know Kiwi dollar is in a bit of a bit of a downward channel there for just about a year or so, uh, and then we had the final kind of pulled back here, pulls back to a, a fifty period moving average that is just you know working its way. You know, puts in a three bar reverse, which you can find details of on the Admiral's YouTube channel, uh, and then once again, what we see is this really big, okay, bearish. Pin bar, engulfing candle, key reversal candle. You know the, the 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 market has turned, right? The market has turned, and we're now looking to see, you know, what's going on here. This was also, as I said, start of March, where uh, you know, as I said earlier, the Kiwi dollar was just weakening, all right? It was just weakening all across the board, and the U.S. dollar was strengthening. And those of you who've been trading over the last month or two will have noticed that, you know, the U.S. dollar has been enormously strong. Remember what my strategy is. I want to buy strength and sell weakness in the FX market. And I have my own ways of doing that and identifying that. But for the tactics, well, once you see it, you know, you're able to, as I say, you know, run and try and trade the uh, the good trend. Uh, and in this particular case that, uh, you know, the, there was actually, you know, on the, the daily chart, the, as you can see, so the daily chart was just, you know, it was collapsing, basically. Uh, you know, it was a lovely, it was actually a really lovely setup. You know, we had a false breakout here at the end of the uptrend around the 200 period moving average. We broke the supporting trend line, all right? Here, here we are into it, the trade. And then basically, bang, Ross Hook is here. Bang, Ross Hook is here. Ross Hook is here. Ross Hook is here. Uh, and in this particular case, you know, we had we had basically we had kind of three wins and then one loss at the end. All right. And that's what you'll normally quite often see is that there might be a loss at the end of it just to give you a little bit of a uh, to give you a little bit of uh, 
uh, insights there and stuff. Uh, Philip says, are you moving the stop loss whilst this is going on? Uh, yes, you can. OK, and I, I will basically uh, utilize a uh, just a, a trailing stop loss with those just invariably behind actually swing points as they uh, as they were. Uh, uh, Darshan said the last one is not really a loss. It got stopped out with reduced profit. Uh, no, it, it was stopped out. OK, um, it was stopped out just because the way I uh, did it. But what what you'll find, Darshan, is, is it's not unusual. All right. That the, the final add on. Uh, might fail for you. Okay, if you if you haven't had a target in place, well then basically don't be surprised if the final trade fails for you. That in itself is an indication that you know what the trend has come to an end now. Right, the trend has come to an end, and as you can see even here on the daily of the Kiwi uh, dollar opportunity, you know once that one had failed, well then basically we can see we're actually in a bit of a pullback. And, and in this particular case, you can see that because of uh, what you're noticing on your analysis of the overall uh, dollar index chart there. So. That's what, you know, that's what particularly looking. And in fact, actually on the Kiwi dollar one, the, there were actually much better opportunities. The four hour chart was a much better way to sort of trade and, uh, and, and, and aggressively attack that currency trend. So you've got strategy in place. Namely, I'm looking to buy strength and sell weakness. That's what I'm looking to do. OK, that's what I'm having to do. My tactics are ideally, OK, just simple price action on a pullback. And the Ross hook is a, is a very simple version of that. So just simple strategy simple tactics right okay just basically being able to execute that time and time and time again that's that's actually what we're that's what we're we're what we're looking for so uh, as always a bit of risk management all right trade management don't don't be getting all too excited it, 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 you've heard me you know for the last couple of years talk on about how important it is to manage risk if you're not managing your risk you know you're going to be roadkill so Normally, what I've always suggested is that your risk parameters are not to risk more than 1% on a trade. All right. But here's, you know, in terms of myself, I never risk more than 2% on a position. And I would define a position as a as a the initial trade and the group of the add-ons, okay, the Ross Hook add-ons. And this is the important thing. Each Ross Hook add-on should be half the capital size of the preceding trade. So, you know, if you know if you if your initial trade is 1%. Then the next, you know, Ross Hook add-on will be half a percent. Then after that would be quarter percent. Then it's down to like 0.12 for, you know, uh, 12.5 of a uh, percent. All right, uh, and and like that. Okay, each one should be half the size. Right. So you know, you're building a plat, you're building a pyramid from the uh, from the bottom up. Right. Not not the other way down. Uh, and if yeah, if you need a reminder, then think of the pyramid from the uh, US one dollar bill. Each layer of your position should be smaller and smaller. And you need to keep a very vigilant, all-seeing eye, all right, over your over this trend because, you know, as I showed you in those last couple of examples, you know, the last trade can be a losing trade, okay, the last add-on can be a losing trade, but it's going to be small, and that in itself is serving as an early warning that you know what this trend has probably come to an end, you know, and we need to get ready to to step apart or step aside rather. So remember what we said right at the start here with Mr. Soros, namely that it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong how much you win when you're right and how little you lose when you're wrong okay and hopefully with that you know with the looking at that with the uh, ross hook add-on that's showing a way that you can attack currency trends so here's a little bit of how take away you know home, some homework for you to take away for over the weekend go and revisit your previous winning trades all right were there opportunities to add to them what impact would it have made to you if you you know to your overall result for that trade what effect would it have had on your overall profitability? And could you devise tactics to add to your existing trading plan based upon what we've discussed here? So, you know, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, uh, many new traders overcomplicate their life by trying to trade complicated trading tactics when actually following a simple plan would help them more. There are thousands of trading tactics out there, but they do tend to boil down to like a bounce off a support resistance line or a break of a support resistance line. What helps traders make faster progress in growing their equity curve is to add to their trade and build a position. This is the best way to attack currency trends. And a simple mechanical way to do that is to use the, uh, the Ross Hock setup. And, and as I said, it can be used across all instruments and uh, all particular uh, um, timeframes. So uh, Andrew says, thanks, Paul. It's interesting. Uh, I've practiced it, but did you not mention the stop loss? The stop loss would always go beyond the other side of the Ross Hook uh, uh, trade, okay? The Ross Hook candle, whether that be the uh, initial candle, okay, or whether it's the candle on the pullback. And I tend to use the, the candle very much on the, uh, the pullback itself. That's what I particularly look at. 
So before we uh, finish up, just a reminder that, you know, come and join me next uh, Wednesday at the next session, which is about trading through uh, bearish markets. We're going to talk about what does a bearish market look like? How does it affect markets? How a professional trader will navigate such particular markets? That's two o'clock London time, Wednesday 1st of June. Check your inbox for the webinar link or head over to the website to, uh, to, to, to settle up. If you don't want to contact us or you have more questions, then by all means, you can see that there's lots of different ways there. OK, and email global at uh, admiralmarkets.com. We'll, uh, we'll do that for you. So um, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. All right. I, uh, I hope you found that uh, useful. I hope that's given you a little bit of insight into a way that you can just take a very, very simple mechanical setup and utilize that as a way to attack a good currency trend. And, you know, and a, a good trend on anything, really. But you no, know, I primarily mostly use it in uh, FX markets, but you know, FX and commodities, but you know, invariably it will look and work across all time frames. Because all time frames or and all instruments, they will have a, uh, a trend at some point. Just remember they don't trend as often as they, you know, as often as you would like, Ten, generally only 20 to 30% of the time. Hence why we want to find ways to attack those trends in order to see that we can you know, milk the most from those particularly good trends. So um, I hope you found that useful. I hope you found that uh, uh, interesting. Uh, as always, I, uh, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, have a fabulous uh, trading week, and I, uh, I look forward to speaking to you soon. Trade well, everybody. Cheers. <laughs>